Hello, everybody. Welcome and thank you for being here today. I'm excited to explore our topic of how Tourism Barry generated $6 million in revenue. This webinar is brought to you by Sitefinity and our premium partner, Flywheel, and also our customer, Tourism Barry. So let's jump in. Let's re review the agenda. Uh, first, I'll introduce our speakers. And then I'll hand it over to Flywheel and Tourism Barry to discuss the purpose and context behind the project. Uh, personalization, solution, solution effectiveness, organizational vision, and then wrap with Q&A. Let's go to the next slide. All right, so today I'd like to um, thank our speakers for joining. We have Kathleen Trainer at Tourism Barry. She's the executive director there. Uh, next, we have Scott Snowden from Flywheel Strategic. He's a, a partner at Flywheel. Chris Knapp, DX Partner Manager at Progress Lightfinity, and also myself, Charlene Sani, part of the DX Partner Development Team at Sightfinity. So uh, we encourage you to actively participate. Feel free to ask any questions in the Q&A panel. I'll be monitoring along with Chris and Scott. And uh, this is a great opportunity to learn and interact with others. So thank you for joining. And I'm going to turn it over to Scott. All right. Well, thanks, Charlene. Appreciate everybody's uh, time and attention. And uh, we're looking forward to getting into some of those details about uh, that $600 million, uh, <laughs> in revenue uh, and how that came to be and how the digital experience was able to support that. Um, so. You know, I'll I'll uh, I'll pass it back over to you, Chris, and uh, sort of uh, let you lead the conversation yeah. here. Appreciate that, Scott. And once again, Kathleen, so thank you so much for uh, uh, talking with us today. We're very eager to learn about the uh, the project. Uh, so I guess I'll just start off with something simple. Can you tell us a little about the city of Barrie? Yeah, uh, Barrie is an hour and a half north of Toronto. We're located on a big lake called Lake Simcoe, and we're close to four ski resorts. So we are a okay. outdoor recreation uh, destination. We're a drive-to destination, and uh, we're one of the largest cities before you head up into northern Ontario. Oh, that's, that's great. And how does Tourism Barrie then support the city of Barrie? Uh, well, we have, um, of course, we it's all about economic development and bringing new money into the city. That's what a tourist office does um we it's called the visitor economy so we increase the visitor economy and our visitor comedy in 2023 brought in almost 600 million dollars and we did that through uh, using environics mobile scapes so we track everybody's web um, cell phones coming in and out and it's a very sophisticated platform we figured that all out and we did our economic impact and that's how we came to that so we support over 300 tourism industry in our region uh, Barry has all the hotels, and then you go do your outdoor recreation in the surrounding regions. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. That is I have great. taken advantage of many of those destinations <laughs> in the years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, if you look closely on some of our assets, you will actually see Scott's picture. <laughs> <laughs> the kids might be yeah. on there too. They learn they yeah. learned to ski in Barry. Yeah. Yeah. And then we took pictures of them learning to ski in Barry, and he's on our assets. Uh, that's great. Scott's famous all over yeah, the place. Drop by anybody. We'll get your picture on the website. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, Kathleen, what's, uh, what's your role there? Um, uh, at, at yeah, Tourism I've been, Barry? yeah, I'm the executive director. Uh, Tourism Barry is actually a not for profit destination marketing organization, and okay. I've been here for 22 years. 22 years. That's okay. great. And how many people do you have dedicated to, uh, to the website? Well, we have one and a half. We have one full time and then a half that helps more with the research and some of the more of the integrated marketing. Um, and then we have summer staff that comes in because, of course, it's our peak season. And yep. that's one of the reasons why we really like Sightfinity, actually, because of how you can navigate it. It's easy to learn. And we have our summer staff. So we have three summer staff come in from May to September, and they also assist in in. Um, doing the big upgrades like just checking every single page checking all the partners etc so yeah so right now we have one and a half full time okay she's not counting herself i mean i know i know you don't like really get in there kathleen but uh <laughs> no i i email them at midnight saying make that change <laughs> why is that still on there no um but yeah, yeah. So you know, for you know the the amount of revenue you guys are are, are generating at six hundred million, um, it sounds like you you run a pretty lean team there. We do. Uh, we run a really lean team. 
So um, how do you how do you enable the team? I, I guess maybe even specifically those folks that kind of come in during the summertime. I'm sure they're probably not super familiar with you know Syfinity, your folks' processes. How do you how do you get them enabled uh, so they're pretty the effective platform. over those few months? Um, yeah, well, Tina, I'm very lucky. Tina and Pam have been with Roseberry, both of them combined over 15, 18 years. We've been on the Sitefinity platform, but it, we just, I think 15 years. Uh, so, yeah, so we started out with a uh, platform. We've been with Flywheel, of course, has helped us. I think this is our third website that they uh, um, uh, designed and helped us through our journey. And so um, our staff is familiar and we're lucky we bring in the same summer students they get to stay with us for three years. So we give them intense training and then they come in at their different holidays. So we try to keep our um, up and coming um, tourism uh, employees engaged in the hopes we've actually hired them before. So you, you, you know, they become full timers when we need it. So yeah, so they just learn it. The, um, you know, they have to be, it's a great platform and it's easy to learn. And I've never had a student come back and say, I can't, uh, I can't figure it out. So yeah. So yeah, I think uh, I think it goes to your to your great web to your great platform. It's easy to navigate and the design, of course, from Flywheel. Right. Of course. So uh, so you mentioned you know you've been on on Typefinity for you know 15 years, which is just yeah. amazing. That's uh, uh you know in, in the software world that's like five lifetimes uh, there. Um, so and you've been through it sounds like at least three website redesigns. Uh, on Sitefinity, yes. So we chose, yeah. yeah, we chose, uh, we hopped from one um, platform we then chose. And we chose Sitefinity because we wanted, we didn't want an open source um, website. We wanted uh, a, a more robust website that could hold our, 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 you know, it's a, I think it's a fairly big website. We represent 300 different industries. Each partner, um, operator, and attraction needs to have their own listing because, of course, we're more like a portal. You drive them where the Lord dreams straight. You drive them into Barry, then you have to drive them into the different attractions. So each one of our partners are located on um, on on the website as well. So we needed a website that would hold that and had high security. That was important. And and um, yeah, so we chose Sitefinity a long time ago and, and loved it. Chris, I'll just add in here. Yeah. Um, Tourism Barry is, I think, one of our only clients, if not the only one where success is measured by leaving the website. <laughs> okay. So it's it's come in, find your information, find that listing, find that partner and click out to somewhere else to, you know, make a reservation, book your, uh, yep. you know, book your ticket, book your attraction. Um, and, and we actually measure clickouts in order to see whether or not certain areas of the site are performing and be able to give the those partners um, some of those analytics to know uh, whether their investment in tourism Barry um, is is working out for them as well yes part of our business model is a pay-to-play model um, where our partners pay into our pay-to-play and collaborative um, and um, you know if they're just moving I remember one of them 33,000 people click through and I added it up because it's like four hundred dollars to go to their experience and I was like yeah we just brought you in like you know thirty thousand dollars you can yeah. afford to do this pay to play so yeah yeah. We, yeah it's good that's a great ROI so um sounds like you've been through a, quite a few web designs maybe this last web web redesign can you talk about some of what your goals were for your last web re, uh, redesign um yeah so you know of course the um Tourism Berry is, um, is a destination marketing, and in yes. tourism, you really need a high imagery website, and you need a platform with lots of imagery. As I mentioned, we are, you know, we represent the tourism industry, and so we have 300 different attractions, restaurants, um, operators on our website that drive them through. And so we needed um, a website that actually had that high imagery, um, and also, um, the ability, because all of our, we have an integrated marketing where, you know, of course, we've got uh, Google search words and social media, et cetera. And a lot of our campaigns drive them back to the website to learn more. And so we have e-newsletters as well, et cetera. So it is one of our main drive them back to learn more. And then we actually gauge if the campaigns worked as well. So it works to see, make sure that our campaigns are working and they're driving the back because we can drive them to landing pages or to our specific uh, microsites. So it was important to 
be the platform allows us to do that. And of course, as we mentioned, the click through and through, we use that ROI and that oh, those are our KPIs. And so Chris, just to add a little bit more technical yeah. detail there. I mean, you know, th those who do this kind of work uh, will be familiar with um, some of the remarketing um, tactics with the with the ads. So it's it's both an acquisition strategy to get um, people who are you know searching um, to make sure they're finding the right information. They know how to you know get up to Barry for the day from Toronto, or you know other ads are targeting a broader international audience even. Um, and once we've got them on the website, uh, then, then there's uh, a capture there that we can use to remarket to them uh, and make sure that we're we're bringing them back and um, and and using the, you know that signal to the best of its advantage uh, to complete that sort of journey. Because as as we know, you don't just kind of come in once and leave. You don't you don't even come in the front door. Right, you you're you're coming in on a specific landing page, a specific um, partner page, um, and that um, that journey is 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 pretty wholesome. So we want to make sure that we're um, um, serving back up to people uh, something that they might have seen, but something that they may not have um, necessarily discovered. Um, if you were looking at you know the the um, the information about certain attractions, um, you might need to know about lodging as well or something like that. Yeah, it's, um, we have an online chat, uh, a live chat that's in real time from eight to five every day. Um, that, and um, so when you're on the live chat, you can actually see the journey that they're taking on the website because they come in on the website, right? And they say, Do, can we help you? And so on the left side, it's kind of invasive, but we can see <laughs> that moving through the website and where they landed and what they're doing. And so a lot of time I'm on the chat and I'm only chatting with one person, but the other day I was there on a Saturday and there was 86 people um, all on our website and I could see them through the journey and it was, you know, it, it, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's a very powerful tool and that, and that extends the Siphonity functionality. It's integrated yes. right in there. Um, and it's, we talk about, I mean, I, work, I don't know where we are in our agenda, but you know, we're sure. sort of into the personalized experiences yeah. um, part here. Um, really knowing sort of how people are consuming that content um, is such a key to the success of this story. Um, and that's enabled through, you know, the, the chat that Kathleen was just talking about, um, as well as the analytics from um, the digital advertising, as well as just the traffic um, story. Yeah. Um, we haven't gotten into Siphonity Insight, but that's in, in use um, as well. Well, kind of going along with that, uh, the idea of personalization, Scott, um, how, how did you guys set up the personalization? Was, did you base it on off of roles? Off the, right. You know, what, what were you guys doing on, on sort of the back end to uh, sort of make sure people are getting to where they're supposed to be yeah. in their personalized experience? Yeah, good question. So um, when, when we start any project, um, but it was particularly relevant with Kathleen and the team, to not even start with the design work, but to start with audience definitions and to say, who are we trying to um, attract? And we have a collection of, you know, quote unquote, generic personas. Um, they're, they're still specific. So we know, I, I gave an example earlier, there's a collection of um, uh, visitors that come up from Toronto for the day. There are people who come in from out of town. There are people who are uh, organizing corporate events. There are people who are organizing um, sports and sports travel and tournaments. Uh, and so we have clearly defined personas just on paper for those audience segments. And then we are able to sort of map that into the experience and overlay them, right? Because sometimes you want to know generically about the region of Barrie and the attractions that you can go to and where you can eat and where you can stay. And sometimes you need to know specifically about venues and where to host your baseball tournament and, and things like that. And so we can, using that uh, paper-based uh, modeling, then use Siphonity Insight to, um, uh, to define what kind of traffic on the website infers that you are a, a member of that persona and people can belong to more than one uh, persona and the system is able to based on your behavior and interaction with the digital property is able to say oh this visitor looks like they're um, in this persona this visitor looks like they're in that persona and then Siphonity allows us to tailor the content uniquely to those different 
um, audience segments. Um, we also have uh, dedicated landing pages uh, on the site and within the experience for those different audiences. Um, that allows us to run some of the digital advertising and other campaigns that direct you straight to um, uh, uh, Sport and Barry. Um, and that's a very, I don't know if you have anything else to add about that sort of campaign or that um, experience, Kathleen. Yeah, um, sport tourism is a big emerging trend. And for Barry, we're a premier sport tourism destination and growing it. And so um, having those tournaments and having one, you know, thousands of people come in, um, which even we just did Q1 and Q2, our sport tourism is worth $29 million just in the last two quarters of economic impact. So we track all of that. But the whole point of it is you bring in these tournaments, you want them to make a tourism related spend. So we're a geofencing the the arenas etc driving them back to the websites and our microsites are sport berry microsites in the hopes that they then like oh what else is there to do and then they're doing that tourism spend on top of you know their overnight spend etc to maximize the economic impact yeah and so that's a cool like part of this personalization is that um uh geofencing that, that yeah. kathleen just mentioned so we're we're, we're hyper targeting um digital advertising to that geograph that geography right around the the venue and that is then driving back to the website to you know book your team dinner or something like that um and i'm pretty sure a good chunk of that 29 million is not yeah. related to my son's baseball team <laughs> <laughs> no no <laughs> yeah just this is more out of, just out of curiosity um how many personas um, are um we we i think we have about five or six okay. that are like on paper i think um at some point we did have all of them modeled um in in insight i think um we came down to sort of a subset of that 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 is most effective for practical use yeah. admittedly we're going through sort of a, an exercise yeah. right now um to with new data from um, the Enveronix partner that uh, Kathleen mentioned at the top of the call to yeah. um, update those and and um, set them up um, with some fresh insight. You have to also remember that the tourism offices, most of them go under economic development and in your investment in your you know offices. And so it part of the destination marketing organization's role is the talent recruitment. So for us yeah. to go right now, we have a big, huge housing push um, where um, you know, we're um, a destination with a big commuter train that you go into the city. And so we have millions, thousands of homes being built. And so we have a big target market to get people to move to Barrie, but also to be employed. And so for us to go back with those personas to our economic development, say we are targeting that, you know, 25 to 35 for the jobs or those 35 to 45 that are going to buy homes. And so the that allows us to go back with the KPI again. Uh, because, you know, they tax technically are paying tourism berries. So for us to say, yeah, give us more money, you need to prove it, right? So it's the personas yeah. allow us to do that. Yep. So it sounds like the the website, and especially maybe the, the revenue that tourism berry gets is very data driven. Yes. So oh, you know, yeah. grabbing on that side. So Scott, maybe, you know, shifting a little bit just to the insights discussion. Yep. Um, and sort of capturing that data, if you want to maybe just kind of briefly let the audience know kind of what insights is. Sure. <laughs> and then, you know, just for those that might not know. It's like, and then, yeah. And then how, 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 uh, how Tours and Barry might be using it. So if anybody on the call is actually using Siphonity right now and you're not using Insight, like just let's have a quick chat about it. Or there's lots of resources online for how to just set it up so that you can watch some of the information come in. Um, and it's it's quite an eye opener. So it is a companion product. It's or or it's part of Sitefinity. It's not even a companion. It's there. It's accessible as part of the CMS. Um, but it's uh, it's it's an analytics uh, platform. It's it's more than that. Um, it is a full uh, CDP um, customer data platform to get you that customer visitor centric perspective on how successful your digital experience is. I like to say that Sitefinity Insight helps you prove the ROI of your of your content, of your experience. It's how am I, um, how is my um, audience, how is my traffic um, arriving at the desired outcome? And, and maybe more fundamentally, are they arriving there? And if they are, what is influencing that outcome? Okay, so that's the sort of value prop for Sitefinity Insight. That's that's what it does. And it can pull in data and push data out to some of your other 
um, business systems. It can talk to CRM and, and email marketing and, and whatnot to get a pretty wholesome view of not just the traffic on the website, but any of those other touch points. Um, that then gives us different reports from a content perspective. How's this content performing? I mentioned the persona uh, perspective, but also a conversion and outcome perspective. And it can say, what is it that drove that, um, that behavior and that desired result? Where are the gaps? What's not on the reports is sometimes um, the best question to ask as well. Um, but boy, is it um, strong in, in terms of being able to help with that um, storytelling and decision making. It's very different from, it's not very different, but it, it's different. It's not just web traffic analytics. Um, it is um, experience-based and outcome-based. Well, that's great. And so, yeah, it sounds like you're using a lot of that data then to um, let your customers know, uh, Kathleen, right. um, you know, kind of how the, you know, was I performing and, and what information. Maybe switching gears a little bit to the integration side. Um, I do want to go back to the chat a little bit because that's, Sounds absolutely fascinating <laughs> um, on that side. So it sounds like you have somebody sort of at least looking at the chat, you know, from eight to five. Is this seven days a week or is it Monday through Friday? Uh, Monday through Saturday. And then okay. on our summer from um, June to the Labor Day, our Labor Day, which is uh, September 1, um, okay. um, it's seven days. Okay. So it sounds like and it's integrated with, with Sifinity, uh, yes. which is great. Um, just out of curiosity, like what's the number one question? people ask on chat. Um, uh, Barry has a lot of festival events. And so the number one chat would be, what can I do today? Where's the, you know, what's events going on? Um, it's mostly event driven. That's probably yeah. one of our number one page is our event page. Yeah. Uh, so that one, I think it's 200,000 plus go onto the, onto there. So yeah, that's probably our number one. And then you'll get like, if it's Canada day or labor day, you'll get a hundred. When's the fireworks start? When's the, <laughs> so some of them they're on the website and then they get impatient. So they, yeah. you know, you got a little person, how can I help you? And it's instant and we answer them. Um, a lot of directions as well to get yeah. how to get somewhere. How to get someplace. And, mm -hmm. and Kathleen, there's some data and analytics um, reporting that come out of that tool yeah. as well. Yeah. And, yeah. and does that influence the way you publish content or what you put on the website? Um, no, it just goes back to knowing what we need to bolster or where they're really going on the website and we, right. what you pay more attention because it's a big website with all the seasons and all the things to do and eat and et cetera. Mm. So when you start seeing that, you're like, okay, um, you know, those are top pages. We better make sure they're good and they're, you know, relevant, et cetera. So it has influence yeah. on that. Right, right, right. Yeah. Sure. And, and, and it is, it's a live chat agent. Yeah. I want to I want to make that point, right? So we're 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 always curious about new technologies and exploring things like chat bots and mm -hmm. how AI can help. But I mean, I think it's so um, critical for a, an organization like Tourism Barry to be to be delivering that real sort of human yeah. interaction. Yep. Um, and it's interesting because I was I I speak Spanish. I lived in Latin America, and so <laughs> one, they actually start it in Spanish, and we have French, and we have different yeah. languages in our office. Um, we get to be bilingual to work for us. But someone came on Spanish, and I was answering them in Spanish. They were shocked. <laughs> like, oh, like, yeah, probably um, never happened. No, so. because the, some of them, the AI will actually translate. Right, if you have a a, yeah. a live chat, so they were surprised that we're no, we're a real person. Um, so yeah. That's great. Well, what other integrations are helping uh, you support your audience? Um, we have another, I mean, Scott can talk about that, but we have another. Well, talk about your um, kiosks. Right, the digital kiosks. So yeah. um, we have 16 digital kiosks in all the hotel lobbies. So, to, you know, you don't print anymore. Um, it's all digital. So we have these big, huge uh, interactive kiosks in all the lobbies and all the arenas. Um, because again, sport tourism is big business for us. Um, and so that's integrated into the website. So when you're when they're integrated into the website, you can actually click on and click off. But the content that's on the website is also mirrored on the kiosks. And so again, this is sort of part of that very wholesome experience. And yeah. and you know, it's a digital experience, but it's also a physical experience. Um, and the 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 um, the solution is very based in that understanding of the journey that you want um, somebody to go on, or 
but you also need to meet them where they are, right? So that's part of understanding this. It's when you're when you're setting out to architect these things, you have an objective uh, that you want to see happen on your website for your business, and it's very tempting to create that journey the way you think it should be executed, um, the way that you want it to happen. Well, if I have a contact form, or if I want to get them to sign up or book a reservation, I'm going to create this blog post and some other content about it. Um, but yeah, if they're coming in, you know, in the evening and they speak a different language or they've already gotten to the hotel, um, they're not necessarily going to be interacting with your content the, that in that optimized ideal way. So, so, so what's great about the way that this whole experience works for tourism, Barry, is just the, the the multitude of avenues that you that, that that can be used in order to sort of enter into the discussion, enter into the experience. Um, so having these digital but physical kiosks right there is so inviting and so accessible to the right the right audience, and it's able to be done in a in a very efficient, lean manner. We've been we've yeah. been sort of emphasizing that theme along this conversation um, as well. It's not like this team of people um, is constantly, you know, synchronizing or maintaining anything. It's, um, it's, a, it's a very strong, tight uh, connection between the content on the website and, the, and what you find on these right. kiosks. We're, Scott's right. We're three and a half people in our office. And so whatever you're doing on the website and changing the content reflects back to the kiosks and others. So it has to be efficient and lean and 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 you don't shouldn't have to do it three times. Yeah. yeah. And and then part of this story, um, I know there was a campaign at, at one point, maybe it's still going on, where there were some QR codes sort of on the waterfront driving mm -hmm. people back to, do you want to just, is it more than that? Is there anything, how did that campaign work for you, Kathleen? That worked really well. It's a little, because um, the whole thing, tourism is, you know, how do you get to the parents? We have, how do you get to the tourists? So we have a, a big waterfront come to the beach. So we have a little golf cart, it's called the Ask Me Cart. And um, so they drive around on these big QR codes, but then we had QR codes all over the place because the whole thing is that day trip where there's no economic impact you want to make them to have a tourism related spend and drive them into our downtown so we put qr codes all over the waterfront and in the bathrooms and posters and they clicked on it drove them to our page and also to it's an efficiency for the staff on the waterfront the lifeguards the the people ma doing the maintenance the people you know actually mowing the lawn tourists come up and ask them where to park on my dog. And so what we did is we did this QR codes everywhere and it drove them to the website and we're like the bylaw, here's what you're supposed to do. Your dog's supposed to be on a leash. There's your barbecues. And also taking them to the downtown and say, and we had different campaigns running to drive them into downtown. After your memories of the beach, go into downtown Barry and, you know, grab a bite with your kids. Here's some cookies shops. Here's some other stuff. So we're trying to get them to do a tour of the Royal Spain, but also efficiency and partnership with our city of Barry so that their staff and lifeguards aren't answering bylaw questions. So mm -hmm. they drove them to the bylaws. Did and that campaign start with that objective yeah. or was that okay so it was like we need to do something to get people to stop interrupting the lifeguards well and also the problem is that you go to a lifeguard and they're 18 years old or seven yeah. or whatever and they're like oh where can i go eat and they're like oh mcdonald's is really good so you want them <laughs> to what, right? so then you're listening to what they're doing and um and you're like why would you send them to that horrible restaurant that you get in your head right you're like why would you tell them to do that or the big thing is um they send oh why are you in barry you should be going to another destination right oh right. Well, the beach is great well why are you sending them out of our destination so right, part right. of it also was to actually do that experience control the message. and highlight, control the message so that the lifeguards and these, you know, summer staff are not sending them or the it. big one. Yeah. The bylaw, like you have to have a leash, your dog can't yeah. go in the water, blah, blah. Yeah. So they're giving them the wrong information. So that was also important to make sure people, you know, are following the rules of our, of our beach. I, I picked up my daughter. She was away on an overnight school camping trip. And the first thing she asked me when she got off the bus yesterday was, Dad, can I really get some large McDonald's French fries right now? So <laughs> <laughs> they've got something that's working, but I, yeah. I, I get that you probably yeah. want to drive them into something local uh, that is um, yeah. having a direct economic. Yeah, is that unique? We call them unique berry experiences. So you want that yeah. something you yeah. can't get from home. That's what your tourism is. So how yeah. do you drive them to experiences that you can't get from home? And so, um, you know, and drive them to our partners that uh, are invested in tourism.
Great. So, because they, you know, it sounds like you, you know, you've been there quite a long time. You've gone through several website redesigns, and you know, the the site's evolved. Um, I think for folks that, you know, especially for you that have a lot of different moving parts, what would you say is the one of the bigger challenges? Not from necessarily just for a software perspective, but just in general. Like, what are some of your bigger challenges when sort of, you know, you got QR codes, you're working with the city, you know, um, all these different, you know, working with live chat. What are what are some of your bigger challenges putting a project like this together? Um, our website just keeps getting bigger. I don't know. I think we, when we redesigned, it was like 530 pages or something insane. So um, yeah, there's a lot of pages. And then, um, so, you know, when you go to the city and they'll do that, I'll be in a meeting and my staff hate me because I'll come back and I'm like, oh yeah, we can do that. We'll do a landing page and then we'll do this, this and this. And then I go back and give Tina like this load of work. So uh, I'm like, oh, here, uh, this is a fire, do this. Um, I promise the city we would do the Ask Me program. So I think those are one of the challenges. You know, the the you got to keep the website relevant. And, yep. and you, people can't go on the website and get wrong information because they'll never come back. And it costs us a lot of money to get those people on our website. It costs a lot of money to drive them there. So, you know, it has to be relevant. So maintaining the website, you know, you do have to have dedicated staff and, um, um those would be some of the challenges is keeping that relevant information. Yeah. We do a lot of blogs too, because we want to be up on the Google standings with, um, with Google. So important that, you know, where to go, you're driving them to our website and we're the top and we have competitors, especially for skiing, you know, Whistler and some of the other ski resorts are trying to uh, up us. So to get on that top of that, Google is, is important that Google knows we have relevant constant information. So I think the challenge also, and also the benefit of, of site finiting having in-house is that we're on the website changing content and Google actually really likes tourism Barry. We have very strong standing with them in most Google searches and thanks to flywheel because they're helping us with those <laughs> little search words. But um, um, that's also, you know, the challenge is you, you have to have dedicated staff. You have to, that's yeah. yeah. And, and just to add into sort of the, the SEO story there um, having, you know, done that, more recent refresh um needing to get some some detail on what's working at the moment so that we don't end up um, um compromising that uh, making sure that you know along the way some of the architecture is changing some of the content on some of these pages is changing um and uh, it was super important to do that in a way that maintained all that search engine um, authority that's great so let's talk about what's next for Tourism Berry. What, uh, what's, uh, what's on the horizon? Um, well, what's on the horizon is we, um, uh, as part of our advocacy for tourism and to help, um, you know, we have a robust um, marketing budget. It's a, it's a nice size budget. And, and so what we want to do is make sure that our partners are leveraging what we're doing so that we're both all on the same page or if we're doing certain things, they're tying into what we're doing. Um, so we have a whole membership page that we're building. And so the the tourism, the businesses that are invested, you have to be a member and you have to log in. So we're giving specific pages where we're going to have our resources. We have, that's where our, our, our reporting's coming in, what we did, what did well. And if you want to leverage what Tourism Berry coming up, these are the things that we're working on for the, we have a big winter fund program coming in. So we'll start putting what we did last year, what we're going to do this year. So that membership page is really important to keep our members um, informed and also uh, value added so that they keep giving us money. To, you know, it's all about money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how to get more money out of them, how to get them yeah. to keep giving money. So yeah. that membership page is important. And also, um, I always have a fight with Tina and Scott because I'm I love video and I'll I'll Google like Pentagonia and I'll go back to Scott. I'm like I want this video on my website, and so um, you know we're always that balance of slow and loading to having high visuals. So we're working the you have all the video you want. Kathy. We're working yeah. on my videos, and so the platform with the big you know um, banners allows for that video. So um, yeah. Um, yeah, we, we did actually hire a full-time videographer. So, um, and so we've got the four seasons almost done. So we have the video ready for the website. So they're looking at that because that's important for tourism is that visual high imagery, visual, um, you know, what to do. That's great. Um, any, any thoughts on AI? It's kind of a huge topic right now. 
uh any you know any thoughts on you know whether it's ai content creation sounds yes. like the the you know the search or i'm sorry the uh, the chat um works pretty well you know that human touch is, is important but just any any general thoughts on ai um absolutely i think ai is really important uh, i was at a big tourism conference and i was chatting with um you know more younger 35, I think they were, I don't know, in 2030s. <laughs> and they did the entire vacation on AI and asked AI because they're big rugby fans and they went to Scotland and AI told them where every single rugby game was. So they yeah. literally drove around all of Scotland using it. So I think it's really important. And also the content has to change because now people are speaking. So what you used to write like a blog, that's not mm -hmm. what you're asking AI. So we are um, invested in that and looking, and that's our next huge strategy on how do you, um, how we're going to bring that AI and that content, but in an efficient way. So, um, you know, I'm not having to hire 10 people, but yeah. So AI is very important. It's important for tourism. Um, um, and then how are you, you know, speaking it? So I'm not too sure. I do go to a lot yeah. of AI conferences. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so um, I'm looking forward to Cyfinity and Scott telling me what you guys are going to do. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. So yeah. I'm waiting for yeah. your lead to say, this is what we're doing. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. okay, let's do it. Yeah. Um, and maybe just going back, I just had a thought. Um, uh, is, does uh, Tourism Berry have a app? No. No. Okay. I actually made a conscious decision never to have an app. We drive them okay. to the website. Yeah. The website. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of, um, it, like, it, it's not a bad idea. It, it works nicely for certain very yep. um, tailored experiences when you're changing so much content on the fly and yeah. you really are hitting a very broad mass market. The, the, um, the investment required to maintain a good app and, and um, there's a whole strategy around um, making sure that, you know, it even has a, a five-star review in the store um, because that can tarnish the brand as, as well. So from a, from that perspective, I think, um, you know, our advice as well was keep your focus on the web content. Um, yeah. and that's where you're going to find, um, you know, more success, more, more, more bang for your buck, so to speak. Absolutely. Um, can I just go back to the authenticated experience that Kathleen yeah. was talking about, Chris? Please. So there's the, the, one of the new things and it, we're, we're actively working on it right now is setting up this member portal so that you know, people can get in and get these resources and some of it's, um, you know, corporate information and, and membership based in information. Um, and all of that is going to be delivered on the same Syfinity platform. It is the yeah. same website. It is, it is a, it is an authenticated experience and we're, we're leveraging all of the membership user role based uh, controls that are out of the box in Syfinity. So it's not like they had to go and procure another platform or an intranet or an extranet solution um, to enable this. Um, it uses the same user um, uh, experience, same UI UX that has already been designed. So there's consistency from a user perspective. Um, it's, it's the same, you know, branded experience there. Uh, and it just lets people log in, manage their account. They can do all the familiar things, reset password, what have you, um, and get at content that is managed in the same system, the same way by the same staff. Um, so that provides a, a tremendous amount of efficiency from a, from a labor and an upkeep perspective, but also from an infrastructure perspective. You don't have to support and maintain two yeah. pieces of software in order to yeah. get that done. Yeah, and I mean, we do have an annual um, partner fee to be part of all of this. Um, mm -hmm. And so having that membership and that efficiency where you're, you know, we encourage them to go on our their listing page to make sure it's relevant and full of pictures because we're driving people to their listing. So it should be, and that's a perfect opportunity for them to make them once a year to even once a year to look at their page and upgrade it, make sure that it's, it's um, you know, it looks good. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Uh, we do have a question um, on there, so I think I'll, I'll throw this out. Uh, so the question was, was Tourism Barry able to procure funding for the CRM uh, systems through government or was it supported through the municipality through the MAT tax funding? Right. Any suggestions on how to financially support it, especially for smaller communities? Right. So Tourism Barry is funded by a municipal accommodation tax. It's legislated in the, the province of Ontario. Um, 6% when you come to our hotel, a 6% tax is put on there. And that's how Trozenberry is funded. And so okay. we use that money, that money, um, we we use, yeah, that's what funded the website. 
So okay. we, it was a big, uh, it's a big ask. I think we started what, eight months a year, Scott, when mm -hmm. we started talking about it. So we saved our money, if you will. Uh, right. So, um, oops. I don't know. <laughs> we saved our money. Save power, save money. Yeah. <laughs> and off, uh, sorry about that. I don't know how that came off. Okay. But, um, yeah, that, that's how we um, we saved our money like, and and funded it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are a few other income streams there with advertising and membership um, yeah. fees as well, but uh, for sure the, um, the the biggest contributor is that um, that that yeah. fee. Yeah, municipal accommodation tax. And so, um, I mean, not to bore everyone else, but uh, most government grants don't give you money for marketing. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, that's hard. It's hard to get money for marketing. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, Scott, one question for you uh, I see here is um, with, a, with a project like this, what are some of the, what the challenges? for a project like this from, from a flywheel perspective. From an implementation perspective. Yeah, and then, you know, how do you guys overcome those? Yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's always the case of sort of the, the laundry list of all the things we wish we could do and want to do and, and needing to fit that into the budget and set priorities. Um, so I don't, it, it's tough to say that that's like a challenge, but that's always, um, you always sort of lament that process because yeah. you, want, you want to be able to do absolutely um, everything. So it, it is really important to do two things. One, let that exploration happen and go like, what, what do you want? Because that could lead to some really cool insights and really cool experiences to let people dream. Um, and, or and maybe it's not too, too much of a dream, right? But then it's our job to go, okay, let's, let's put a bit more structure and plan against this. And we will do as much as we can to plan the entire vision and say, here's what it would take to accomplish this. That's information that Kathleen and the team can use when they're you know, doing their next sort of report to the city and, and allocating funding and whatnot and, and turn it into a phased implementation or something like that. Um, you know, for example, we didn't necessarily do the authenticated experience at the same time as the as the site launch that was for practical reasons. But, you know, also it sort of helps with the cash flow and whatnot. So getting clarity on exactly what it's going to take to get these things done, putting in the, the upfront work to have a detailed work plan, um, costed um, work plan as well, and then be able to set priorities against that and, and execute. So that's from a project perspective. Yep. Um, from a technical perspective, we don't want to compromise the design. We don't want to say, well, you know, the system won't let you do that. Or other other platforms have templates you, you have to follow. We wanna let the creative experience um, um, come forward with in all its glory and then say, cause because in Sitefinity, there's there's no constraints on that. If 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 you can design it, we can build it. Um, and so then it's just making sure that we can reconcile those things and bring those things um, into balance. Um, and um, it, it, then it comes back to that prioritization thing, but it is really kind of sometimes we, we enjoy those challenges. Those are the ones where we're like, oh, cool. We get to kind of figure out this design layout or that interactive element or get as much video as Kathleen wants on the same page with, without you know, degrading the SEO, um, that kind of thing. So um, that's a fun challenge, but that's, um, that's what, those are the kinds of opportunities that we get excited about. That's great. I think that's all the questions. I know we're kind of coming up to the we're time right here. We're time there. We're like that. That almost never happens. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, amazing. So, um, Kathleen, uh, once again, just really want to thank you uh, for you know jumping on today. Um, the tour is very excited. It's just a, it's just a great site overall. Um, you know, a lot of different moving parts. You don't always kind of realize all the different moving parts all that are on a website yeah. until you start talking to people about it. Um, you know, just all the different moving parts. And, you know, uh, I love the fact that your your team runs lean um, and is able to, to do all, all of these different things. And, and Scott, once again, appreciate uh, all you do uh, for your insights yeah. on okay. uh, in our discussions today. Uh, if there are any other questions, uh, you know, please uh, let us know. Um, but we'll be posting this on, I think, Bright Talk. Yep. as well and uh if you do have uh you know if you're if you're looking to redesign your website or have any uh questions <laughs> please reach out to the folks at flywheel They're find us on linkedin that's i live on linkedin <laughs> yeah. search scott. For scott snowden on linkedin okay. that's uh that's how the best way to get in touch yeah. and uh, scott actually has a um 
uh, workshop today. We're doing a personalization workshop at noon today. Yep. On We're going to get into the specifics of Cyphenity. Busy man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All the time. So, um, so with that, um, thank you everybody for, for your time today. And yeah. uh, have, a, have a wonderful day. And we look forward to hearing from everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye. Thanks, Kathleen. Thanks, Sorry. Kathleen. Sorry, I'm not, can't see me. <laughs> <laughs> That's no okay. Worries. All right, Thanks, Kathleen. Everyone.